Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Vincent Schwenk and today I want to talk about color user data in Redshift. And um, I often explain a lot of stuff on my Patreon channel, so I will make a little advertising here. If you like the tutorial, perhaps you can have a look at this page and subscribe me. Then the next thing I want to show you, I already prepared here a little scene where we'll talk about the user data and I am using these soft body shapes which are also on my Gumroad page and they are low poly ready for soft body and UV unwrapped. Perfect. I am here in Cinema um, 22 and I'm switching my layout to my Redshift render layout and I will put that in the IPR. And you can see on the right side, I already prepared something. I have, um, well, first of all, already delete that. I have some lights installed and my render settings are mostly ready to go. So this is roughly what we will create today. And um, this is the shader we will talk about. But yeah, overall, let's start again from scratch. So I'll create myself a rest of material. And I'm replacing the material with my objects. So um, just to give you a quick look, here are my objects. They're all cached. And I have some clones to give them a bit of bigger variation in the color. And you'll see later what it brings. So this is a standard reg of material with nothing on. And um, let me first give myself a little bit more room. Perfect. So nice. Then what... Do we want where do we start i am here on my redshift shader graph and i'm searching for color user data then i'm pressing my preview button to preview the this node itself so we need some attributes in the node well there are small graph objects and particles and mostly we i'm using the object ones and in the first years i did use um, always the geometry id color which gives each of the object a different color, which is like really amazing. You can do a lot of stuff with it. But the only thing which I didn't know is, I will show you that. Just um, let me make this a little bit quicker. So I'm just also rendering one frame, perfect. So I'm pressing now rendering and you will see what the problem is because I have this preview image here and I think everything is nice, the colors are the way I like and then I render and then you can see it's not the same anymore. They change the colors and that's kind of annoying. I don't know why and what, but I kind of have a good workaround for that. And for me, the best thing is to select all the materials you want to give a random color and you can do this with the display color can each object give a random color which would be kind of annoying and tedious but there is a super nice plugin which is called random color and if I click that I can just assign a random color to my selected objects and now if I go into my color user data and go into object and switch into display color then the objects are the same color as as you can hear on the right side and the good thing is it renders the exact same thing. So you can also like manually tweak that if you say, okay, I like the overall look of the color, but this one should be more, I don't know, pinkish. And that's quite nice. So this is the first thing. Then we can, for example, put that color user data into my material. And now we have only one shader on the object but all objects look already a little bit different. And the good thing is you can really make the shader very, very varying just with this one node. So therefore, let's jump, uh, let's start. I will first of all give myself a ramp node, connect the color user data to the ramp node and connect the ramp node into the reflection roughness. So if I press C for my shortcut um, on the ramp, you can see that each material looks a bit different. So the black ones are 100% glossy and the white ones are really rough. For my look, I don't want to have this really rough material. So I give myself a bit grayish ones. And overall, I want to 
emphasize more the dark colors so I have more reflection. So if I press now back into my material and preview that, you can see that they are all having um, different, uh, different roughness level and just to exaggerate the effect I'll go back to white and increase the contrast and you can see some of them are really matte and some of them are really glossy. So but I want to tone down the effect a little bit. So perfect. Then where do we continue? First thing, roughness. Well, mostly I would say you don't want just a plain roughness material. That's why I am just quickly giving myself like some dirt or some scratches onto my material to have a little bit of a variation in the roughness. So I'm happy with this material and I will just show you how you blend them together. So therefore we all need a color layer and now I can plug in my color user data in the base color and my new material into the layer color and to see what's happening I'll also preview this node and in my blending mode I want to multiply. Mm, but overall then I would say we make the ramp a little bit brighter so this is nice. And now I have my new material and put that in reflection roughness. So we have now a detailed variation of the reflection, which is quite nice. Then what can you do next? Next thing I would I really like to do with color user data is to blend different materials in one shader. For example, um, I want to, this object and this object to be another thing. I can, for example, um, copy another material. And I already prepared some materials. So I'm putting this one as a preview and I'll say, yeah, okay, this looks really nice. I exactly want that. So then select the material without the displacement. I will tell you later why. And I'm selecting my whole material. And I'm going back into my created color user data material and also I will call this one user data and I am pasting, I just copy pasted the material in there. So on the shader graph we are having now two materials and to blend two materials together we need a material blender. So that's quite nice. We connect the first material into the material blender and then we connect the second material with layer 1, color layer 1. So then let's put that to the output. And what's happening now, they're gonna be blended together. But first of all, I need to delete the material I dragged onto my post, uh, onto my um, objects. And now nothing is happening because we need to blend them together. And therefore I will create myself another ramp node. And this is the input goes into blend color and well let me make the window a bit smaller here so we are having now values from black to white and what you can see is Redshift is trying to blend these two materials together so you can see some of the reflection and some of the material below so that's not what I want I want some steps so I'm selecting these two nodes and clicking steps and if I press C to preview this material, then you can see only one material is white, but I want, I would say, a few, like this perhaps. And if I press C on the blended material, you can see now that half of the objects belong to material one and the other half to material two. And I will tweak material 2 just a little bit. Let me see what I got there. I got a bump. Mm, we can make that a bit a bit more. And also the normal map can go way more. And yeah, that's the normal map in there. Perfect. So, but overall I would say I don't want to see the seam, the cut of the seam here from my object, so it's nice to switch the objects. The glossy ones should be these ones and these ones should be glossy ones. That's quite easy, we just need to switch our colors. So black is white and white is black. 
And now you can see the other ones are the ones we want there. And I will create more glossy materials and only these two, two will get the other material. And then what we can do as well is again take our color user data and put the color user data, for example, also in a color correction. If you want to ma manipulate the colors and I'm just connecting the color user data with my new color correction node and I will put that into my diffuse color and you can see the same colors are here the same so we could actually manipulate the color itself by clicking onto the object and changing the color here you can see it directly translates into that but you can see also because I changed the value of this color the value of the black and white changes so the um, two materials change in there but that's all right so we only have these these two materials now and I want to color correct them for example I want them to be more saturated so I'm going over the value of one which is also possible and I want them to be more bright and perhaps I want to shift the hue a bit let's see what would be really fitting in there I don't know but let's go back to saturation of one to get it a bit more desaturated and yeah I would say something like this looked nice so these two and these two work together perfect so the nice thing about the color user data, you can continue and continue and repeat this process as long as you want. For example, I'm giving myself here a new material and I'm also connecting the material into layer 2 and layer color 2. And to give us a bit of variation, I will choose an aluminium material. And the only thing I need to do now is copy my ramp and again connect the color user data into my new ramp and connect the new ramp into my layer color 2 and blend color 2. So what's happening now is because these two ramps are the exact same thing, the silver material just replaces this material. Therefore, we need to change some of our values. So for example, um, here, or Let's see where is the other sweet spot. Yeah, I would say like that. That's nice. So now we have material one, silver, material two, this rope thing, material three, my very saturated kind of plastic thingy. And you can easily increase or change the materials as much as you want. You can put in some more bumps in here and play something with this material. And that's what I will roughly do. So I'll quickly load myself a roughness map and I'm connecting that into my reflection roughness of the material. So we can see that we have something in it. My camera still has a bookcase, so I'll turn that off. You can see there's some scratches and gives us a bit of variation in there. So that all is done with one shader and we already have a huge variety of materials and looks so I'd say this is a very nice way and quick way to easily change your look and if you for example aren't too happy with the overall look or the uh, color values you can just go back into your um, random color and assign new random colors and everything will change so the objects are now different they change the colors change and the the overall um, look changes so that is the first thing which I wanted to show you which is really very nice and the second thing about color use data is this setup and I am loading myself like a tiled material with some stones and you can see that the stones are exactly the same each one and you can easily spot that it's tiling and to make it even more obvious 
and better for you in the stream to see. I will just load myself a UV material and let's see, yeah. So they're all exact, exactly the same. And perhaps I will even make a little gap in between so it's even more easy to distinguish what's happening in there. So let's make it bigger, perfect. But there again is a solution. So again, color user data. If I press C, it's all black. In this case, we can actually use geometry ID color because I don't care how well how the colors are, um, if the colors are changing. So, and what we're gonna do with that, I'll show you. First of all, we need to plug the color user data into RAM. So every of these objects has a different gray value. So put that in and press C for preview and each of them has a different value. They are very close, but they're all different. And then what we want to do, we want to offset this material itself. You can offset the material by the scale, by the offset and by the rotation. And to do that, we need another node, which is called change range. So I'm plugging my ramp into the change range node and the change range node first changes the scale. The scale is 0 0.5 and I want to change it only like a little bit. So my old input is 0 to 1, that's the gray value, and the new output is also 0 to 1. But that we want to change, for example, the scale of 0 would scale this down to 0 and you wouldn't see anything anymore. So just to see what's happening there. I'm previewing my um, UV checkerboard again and so to see if the black materials start to clip that would be a scale of zero and they're not visible anymore so we need to change that and I would say we want a value between point, point 0.3 and point 0.8 so it's something in between there you can see now the variation of the scales and I would say we can even go a bit a bit bigger in the variation Oh God, say this is a bit too small. So oh, point, point 0.3 in one. So each of the UV um, images are scaled a little bit different now. So that's the first thing we want to do. And it already looks a bit less um, like tiled. But we have two more to go, like the offset and the rotation. And I now easily copy my change range, put the ramp into the new change range and connect that with the offset. The offset, for example, is can be a bit more. So also it can be zero. Zero means zero offset, and the offset itself can be, I don't know, let's try 10. So you can see the image is now a lot moved in the position. So that's, for example, something really nice. And if you have a texture which, for example, has a horizontal like orientation, that would be already it, but you can also um, make it even more unique by again putting the change range node into the new change range connect that with my rotation and rotation you know is between 0 and 360 but I only need like a 180 or oh, should we go 360 yeah, we can go 360 you can see now the look is very different and you can tell that this is the same material, especially when we switch back to a, um, what do we want? Like some concrete material. Let's see, put that in preview and yeah, the image itself is, is hard to see, but you wouldn't see the tiling. So yeah. This is a very powerful setup how to get rid of obvious tiling issues. So that's cool. You just need one material in one shader and not copy this 10 times and offset your UV by hand. It's all done manually. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something and I hope um, you're as happy as me about having color user data. And yeah, hope to see you soon. Enjoy. Bye bye.